Well, hello everybody. How are you doing out there? Hope everyone out there is doing very, very well. I hope they are. Ah, oh, now I have a bit of a conundrum here. This is a video I never ever wanted to make. It's a very, um, it's a very petty situation, and I thought I'd take the higher road and uh, just let itself uh, go away because it is very basically ridiculous and petty so anyway it apparently doesn't want to go away so i guess i have to address it here so anyway let's uh start uh, let's just start at the part of the beginning anyway uh this is about brent and jose now brent um he came over at one point to see if he could get a puppy off me uh, way back my, our subscribers pushed us together for him to get a puppy that didn't work out the only puppy he wanted was angel a white one and uh, that didn't work out and uh, that's where we met and then uh, down the road a uh, few months uh, you'll notice that uh, Oho Blue Van Brent and I camped out in Whiskey Creek and then we moved up to the uh, um, recreational site uh, up in behind on Melrose Road on the logging road there and uh, we we're gonna camp out up there. Anyway, um, so what happened with uh, Brent basically is uh, he was just being very, very rude, obnoxious, uh, arrogant, condescending uh, in a lot of ways towards me. And it was just not being a healthy relationship anymore for me. And uh, now, if you go back six months in his videos where it says uh, camping with Oho Blue Van in Kent, six months ago, you can't miss it. Um, if you look at that video in the one minute and 55 seconds mark, one minute, 55 seconds, uh, you'll see that uh, I'm leaving and I was going to be staying overnight that night, but I decided to leave and, um, and just get away because, you know, just get away from the situation so anyway you'll notice that as I'm leaving he goes there goes the guy in the skirt and I had a lot of issues with that uh, he, he never used my name at all uh, he always said the guy in the skirt and and stuff like that he was always derogatory towards me and stuff and I just thought you know I've had enough and I just drove away and uh, I stopped communicating with him uh, right after that point there uh, we never communicated again um, other than the next morning when uh, we had coffee at Bigfoot, he was acting up again, and I got up and I went and jumped in my truck and trailer and I took off, and that was that was it. That was the last time I communicated with him, and I just didn't feel like doing it. And I thought if I just ignore the whole situation, you know, take the higher road and leave leave it, let it die, right? Well, it didn't seem to want to die, but anyway, that's the situation uh, between Brent and me, and it's the truth of the situation. You can believe either way you want to. It's it's totally up to you. But you can see on the one video where he uh, mentions that, calls me the guy in the skirt, and it was just something I didn't feel like dealing with anymore. So that's uh, um, basically uh, the situation with Brent, I guess, for now. <coughs> Excuse me. Now with Jose, um, basically, even in her own words, she was uh, in uh, her house for a few years um, and she was lonely and um, just uh, tired of being home and stuff like that and she was miserable in the house and stuff like that and so and she was sitting around watching a lot of youtube videos a lot of them including mine anyway so uh, one day she went out and these are in her, her own words too one day she went out and she bought a van and uh, she drove straight out to Vancouver Island and uh, came out here and uh, sometime bef before she got here maybe even when she left I don't know for sure but uh, she came straight up she go googled um, Bigfoot burgers because she knew I hung out there all the time she googled Bigfoot burgers and she came uh, and uh, met me in that area there where I was camping out like I'm camped right behind the gas station right beside Bigfoot burgers it's right there so she came and uh, Came and found me and said, "Hey, are you Kent?" And I was like, "Yeah." And, uh, anyway, so uh, uh, we chatted. She seemed nice at first and everything like that. Uh, I don't want to say bad anything really bad or negative about anyone here. That's not my point. I just want to clear the air and get the stories 
absolutely straight and true. So uh, the next day, she uh, I did a film of her of her van, and you, you'll see that on my videos too. I did a film of her van. It was all good and cool. And then the day after that, uh, we were doing um, a live show, and as I was doing the live show, um, and I had Brandon. Um, I'm monitoring the whole thing and Jose was sitting with Brandon neither one of us knew what was gonna happen and I'm doing the live show and Jose drops 500 bucks on me just like that bang and it was it shocked me you could see if going back in my live show um, it shocked me and I wasn't sure what to think with that but I just kind of left it and st stuff and uh, then within the next couple of days basically uh, she more or less mentioned that she was madly in love with me and uh, she had been watching me on YouTube for quite a while, and, and she had a real huge crush on me, just a huge crush. And she uh, kept saying she wanted to help my channel, and I just said that's okay. You know, I didn't really, I didn't want to ask anyone for anything. It's not the way I am. If someone wants to support my channel, I let them do that on their own um, initiative, right? So anyway, so uh, eventually. Uh, she uh, so she sent me the five hundred dollars on the live chat. Eventually, down the road, she sent me another three thousand dollars, and she was saying that uh, it could cover like things like a jackery and a, 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 a DC fridge and freezer unit and stuff like that. You know, things I actually need for the channel. And I just said, fine, if you want to help, that's fine. But I was really shocked and surprised at how much money she was throwing at me. And then I bought a. At the same time, I bought a, um, I bought a, a drone off of Brandon, and uh, I had gave him a small deposit on it, and I was sitting there saying, well, I'm going to send Brandon the rest of the money for the drone, and uh, that was another 700 bucks, and so I sent Brandon the money, and then she says, oh, well, I'm going to pay for that too. Uh, I'll pay for that, and she sent me the other 700 bucks, and it was like she just kept dropping money on me. Um, so, you know, I don't know who does that, who kind of goes out and buys a van and comes straight out to Vancouver Island to meet someone she's never met before who lives in a tiny house, right? Um, and then starts dropping a whole bunch of money on them. Um, I thought it was, uh, quite strange, but she did tell me she was madly in love with me and I figured that's the, the reason why. And I, I told her, um, uh, sometime after the 500 bucks, the first 500 bucks, I told her, I said, you know, I, she said she was going to send me a bunch of other money. And I said, I don't really want your money in that. Um, you know, I, I just felt bad that she was spending all this money and towards me and stuff like that. And um, she even took Angel down there uh, without me. She drove all the way down to take Angel in to get groomed, brought her back and that without me. You know, I let her come and go as she pleased. And uh, she was helping out uh, whatever she could. Um, Anyway, I just, I didn't know her background at all, so I just felt really weird, all this money coming in, and I just, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't feel right about it anyway. So, and I just thought it was weird, someone would come all the way, uh, 5,000 kilometers to uh, meet me, and then start dropping money on me and stuff. But again, like I said, she was madly in love with me, so uh, that made part of the sense there. And anyway, <clears throat> now long story short, in a way, <clears throat> I've been I was I've been single for uh, a little over 17 years now and I prefer to be that way and the reason for that is I just never in my life met you know the woman I should be with or whatever however you want to look at it and so I decided if that ever happens or never happens it doesn't matter I'll be single and when the woman comes along I'll know she's the one right because everything will work right or whatever anyway <laughs> Otherwise, I just want to stay single for the rest of my life. And uh, I basically mentioned that to her and said that I wasn't interested in a romantic relationship with her uh, long term or anything like that in any way. And uh, she uh, hung around about three weeks or so and uh, she was still trying to uh, convince me to be in a relationship with her. And, uh, you know, it's just not my type of person. It's nothing against her or nothing. It just wasn't my type of person, and, and um, I don't know. I just didn't want a relationship. Anyway, um, so then she got very, very angry about that after a while, 
that she knew she couldn't have me and stuff like that. And uh, she was sitting parked in the parking lot. Um, and she sent me a, a text messages um, after she got angry and was saying, you know, like, you're incapable of loving anybody and uh, um, I'm going to take off and I'm going to go find someone who will love me the way I want to be loved and all this kind of stuff. And uh, uh, I'm going to take off and, and uh, go live my life and, you know, don't communicate with me anymore. Don't talk to me. Don't watch my channel. Don't do anything. I, I got all the texts there. Anyway, so, uh, and so basically at that, from that point, it was only a few days that she was down at Brent's place and uh, in Duke course of time uh, they went on this channel and showing her giving him a three thousand dollar laptop so I don't know that's uh, exactly what happened um, you know she couldn't have me and she got very angry and she took off and uh, I believe that's why all this belligerence and stuff uh, animosity towards me from both of them I, uh, I'm positive of that now uh, one thing I want to clear up is uh, I've been accused of locking her in the um, parking lot of the burnt down uh, co-op gas station now you know, look at very very many of my videos I'm even going to show a couple of clips in here somewhere um, but you can look at many 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 of my videos in Whiskey Creek and you can see that there's never been gates on there and lots of other people have come and gone they come and gone for years and years and years hundreds of people coming like daily and weekly and, and throughout the year they're always coming and going nobody gets locked in and um, every single night she slept in her van and I slept in my tiny house by myself with my dogs and that's the way it was and she could come and go as she pleased and like I said she went down and she took Angel down without me going along with her and had her groomed and then brought her back so she was not locked down at all I would never lock anyone anywhere I mean that's not me at all anyone that knows me knows that that would never happen and anyway as you can see from all the evidence with the videos and everything like that there was no gates there nobody was locked down and and that's a total fabrication she was I guess locked in her van by her own um, uh, I don't know by her own ideas and stuff like that but no, she could come and go, and she did. She came and went all the time. She went to the pool to go swimming. She went down to get groceries and do this and that. She was coming and going constantly. So nobody was locked in. There's no gates there. And uh, you can see that all in my videos. And um, now, as far as Angel goes, <coughs> this goes right back to Brent as well. Like uh, way back in the beginning, when Angel was born, I said on the video of her being born, I said, I'm keeping this puppy, this little white one, I'm keeping her. And uh, shortly after that, one of my subscribers from way back, who's still around, um, had mentioned uh, in an email to me uh, a bunch of different names for the little white one. And uh, one of the names she came up with was Angel. And from that moment on, I went, yes, that's the perfect name for her. So she was named back then, I claimed her in that. And then eventually um, that incident uh, happened where uh, Brent lost his dog uh, Goldberg and uh, then all the subscribers were pushing us together and uh, saying oh he needs to come up and get a puppy off of him that sort of thing so uh, just like I told him I told Jose and I've told everybody that ever knows me that uh, I would never ever sell Angel for anything Not, you could offer me a million dollars and I wouldn't let Angel go basically at some point the money would be gone and I wouldn't have my Angel I kept her because I wanted her and I mentioned that to Brent, I mentioned that to Jose, and I mentioned that to everyone. And uh, Jose believes that she spent, I think she said, $3,000 to buy Angel off me, which would never happen. I told her, she mentioned it at one time to asking if she could buy Angel off me. I don't know why. And um, I said, no, that'll never happen. And I told her the story. I'll never, never sell her. And... Uh, so anyway, she sent me money any, anyway, um, all along there. She sent me three different amounts of money. Um, and uh, and I told her, and I've told many, many, many other people, that I've been offered a lot of money for Angel. And it's well over $3,000 that I've been offered. I believe it was $3,300 was the top offer 
for Angel. And I, I turned it down. And everyone I tell, I tell them, I was offered a lot of money for Angel and I turned it down. And I also wouldn't take a million dollars. It's uh, Angel's my dog. I said it right from the beginning. Like within a couple, two days of her being born, I said that. And I've said it to everyone down the road. So um, I don't understand uh, how she under, believes that she paid for Angel. Uh, she came and took her for walks. She took her to the groomer and everything and kept bringing her back. If she actually thought Angel was her dog, um, I would think that she would try and take her with her. But that never happened. She just, uh, one day, she just got very, very angry because I wouldn't, I, I told her I didn't want to date her and it was done. It, we, it was not going to happen. That romantic relationship was not going to happen. And she got very even more angry and then she sat in her car and sent me a whole bunch of texts a lot of texts and uh, and basically that's what she said I'm you know you're incapable of love and uh, I'm gonna go and run off and find a man who will uh, treat me right and love me the way I want to be loved and all that kind of stuff and you know you'll never ever see me again and uh, um, you know don't try and contact me don't call me don't text me don't even watch my channel so and that's what, and then a few days later, she was hanging out with Brent there, giving him a $3,000 laptop. So, I don't know. Uh, with that information, that just seems a little unusual that a woman would drive all the way out here, 5,000 kilometers, to see me and try supporting my channel. Um, and everything that I've told you about the situation. Um, and then suddenly she goes down and visits Brent and starts handing out gifts again because he made her... A bed which might have cost him about 30 bucks or something like that or you know who knows how much it doesn't matter but he made the bed for her in her van and she bought him a three thousand dollar laptop it's just uh, says something about the person and then I also had um, um, and, and, and I just want to say too that uh, Brent keeps saying that I owe Jose a dog angel and uh, the thing is is Brent was never around when uh, Jose and I were hanging out together, Brent was never around, so I don't understand where he gets the idea, other than from um, Jose, that uh, I owe, owe her a dog. It's her, 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 it's what she's saying, and she's very angry. She's a woman scorned. Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. So, um, so that's how the situation is going. So I don't know why he'd say that. Because he has no evidence that uh, uh, Jose paid for anything, including Angel. There's no evidence whatsoever of that. Um, and on top of that, again, if, you know, if Jose felt like it, she could have taken Angel out for a walk and then put her in her van and just drove away. That's how easy it would have been for her to do that. But she didn't do that. She uh, um, just never did that. So... Uh, I don't know why they're both trying to uh, slander me with these crazy rumors and everything. I do not know why. Um, Brent really has no idea of what transpired between Jose and I when she was around because he wasn't there. Um, so he shouldn't say anything. And I'm, I'm really sad about that, that he, uh, he believes that and thinks that way. It's very sad and I, it uh, depresses me a lot. And the whole situation depresses me because, uh, for one, I would never lock anyone in. And as you can see from all my videos, or many of my videos in Whiskey Creek, there's never any gates on there, and people are coming and going all the time, just like this here. In many of my videos, you've seen uh, pictures like this. of the, There's no gates on the property whatsoever. People can come and go as they please. And here comes Sandor. He's coming over to work on my Ford truck that you saw in a previous video before. No gates whatsoever. People can come and go. And Sandor showed up while Jose was here. So he met her and knew her personally and knew that uh, this is all not true at all. And while Sandor was here, he met Jose and had hung around with her for a couple of days and stuff. A few days, actually. And uh, he uh, he's, um, he'll tell you for sure that Jose said to him that she could not buy Angel off me. It just wasn't going to happen. She said that to him. He'll corroborate that. And also that uh, she could come and go as she pleased anytime. And she did. And he saw that and witnessed it all. So, you know, there was no um, locking anyone up anywhere. 
And when Jose did leave, she uh, basically she sent me a text saying she's going to leave and go find another man. And she drove away. So, you know, nobody was locked up. I would never do that. I'm not that kind of a person. Um, I've been single for over 17 years because I want to be that way. And, uh, you know, I don't want to lock women up. I want to be by myself. Um, so, you know, all of this is kind of uh, ridiculous and gotten way out of hand. And it really saddens me that I have to actually address this because it's just really petty and, and silly. And it's not true. None of it's true. I never locked anyone up. Um, everyone can come and go as they please. And nobody paid me ever anything for, um, for Angel. I've been offered a lot of money for Angel and I've turned them all down. And I tell everyone uh, my story of how I would never sell her at all, not even for a million bucks. So uh, this is just a situation that's gotten out of hand. And uh, that's basically the reason why I stopped communicating with Brent back then. I've already told you that in the beginning. And uh, this is exactly what transpired between Jose and I. She came 5,000 kilometers out here, straight out here to see me. And then she was madly in love with me. And um, she was throwing money at me. And oh, that was the other thing I was gonna say is that um, I didn't even realize about the money with Jose. Like I felt bad about the money. I thought, oh, maybe it's her pension or something. I don't know. But uh, uh, it wasn't until she ran off to be with Brent she buys him a $3,000 laptop um, that Brent sent a text uh, through Brandon to me and said that I'm a loser because <clears throat> he got the rich lady. Apparently she won a lottery. And that was the first I'd heard about it was when Brent said to me through the text of Brandon, he uh, mentioned that uh, I'm a loser, that I let the rich lady get away um, and he's got her now. and. So I'm a loser and he's the winner. So if he's such a winner of finding the rich lady and having him, her in his life, then I don't know why he's going to all this trouble to slander me and everything when he has no clue. So that's the story of Brent and Jose. Um, I hope I've covered everything I can. Um, if I haven't, I'm gonna make another video clip and add to this. But, uh, um, that's everything I can think of and I just I I just wanted to take the higher ground and ignore it and hope it went away because it's all ridiculous, it's not true, it's all fabrication and um, it's very depressing too but apparently I couldn't just let it go and be me. I had to address it and it made me very sad and depressed and, but this is, this is it. So anyway I hope that clears a lot of things up for everybody. You can believe whatever side you want but anyone who knows me directly or indirectly um, and anyone out there should understand that that's not the kind of person I am it's absolutely not I'm, I'm a very peaceful kind person I've got two dogs that I love very much and I would never hurt anyone or do anything wrong to anyone or try and rip anyone off it just it's just not in me you know not at all it never has been so anyway uh, let's just see if we can put this all to bed and move on from this uh, whole thing okay we'll talk to you hopefully in the next video so i'll just say what i always say ciao for now